just found out that uh, some kind of funny is going on in my neighborhood. I found out the neighbors had a meeting. Talk about they got some crazy person on the block. For some reason, I didn't get invited. <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. We'll read just two verses. Verse 5 says, Hebrews 11, 5. By the way, by faith, by faith, by faith. We're going to talk about faith. It's mentioned at least 15 times in this chapter. And I suspect it's, it is rather important. Verse 5 said, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6, Though without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must, must, must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm going to spend some time on the middle of that verse, verse 6. Believe that he is. Believe that he is what? What is he? Well, we're going to look at that a few minutes this morning. Hebrews chapter 6 or chapter 11, verse 6, teaches that we cannot please God without faith. In fact, it's impossible to please Him without it. Notice the phrase, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is. He is. Must believe that He is what? There are a good number of things the Lord is. First of all, we all know that the Lord is our salvation. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2 said, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. God wants every human being to come to Jesus Christ for salvation. But you know, the percentage of people saved that have salvation in this world is very, very small. Now, there are a lot of saved people who are not like us, who happen to believe this book, right. like we believe it. Yeah. When I talk about the book, I'm certainly talking about the King James Bible. Amen. That's the true Word of God. We may mention that a little bit more later if we have time. But God wants everybody to come to Christ for salvation. Acts chapter 4, verse 12 tells us plainly, Neither is, there, neither is there salvation any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Everyone in here is a professing Christian. I wish some lost people were here. But they need to hear this. So we're finding out that God, He is our salvation. Uh, not good works or self-righteousness. We'll learn a little bit about that. Romans chapter 3, verse 28, not by works of the law, it says there, makes it very clear that no one has ever been saved by keeping God's law in the New Testament area for sure. It says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. <laughs> John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13 say, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Let me back up just a second here. That word power. To them gave he power. You know in the new, in the new uh, translations, the new fake Bibles, they changed that word power to authority. Yeah. Hmm. Authority. Well, that's a fantasy of uh, Bible rejectors. Power is different than authority. Yeah. Verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Which were born, verse 13 says. Now, 
we can find here there are three definitions of the new birth which eliminate the entire teaching of Islam and Catholicism and Judaism and Buddhism and Hinduism, mysticism, Satanism, atheism, and humanism. Your new birth cannot be connected with your blood or the blood of any animal. Your new birth cannot be connected with yoga or meditation or extrasensory perceptions, mental concentration, or anything of that nature. The new birth uh, cannot be by any physical, not even water, cannot be related to that at all, but your first birth was by water. Brother Kogel has taught that very clearly. We understand that. Your first birth was by water. And the Apostle John says that this new birth is a second birth. Boy, aren't you glad you got it? Yeah. It's a second birth, and it's from God, specifically from God's Spirit. From His Spirit. John 3, 5 talks about that. And as in the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, first and only birth, First and only birth, a spirit. Both of God's natures were sired. Both of his natures were sired. You know, he had the nature of a human. He had the nature of a God, of course. Were sired by the Holy Spirit. Only one of ours was sired that way. Or his, only one of his was sired that way. And that which is born the spirit of spirit. I hope I made that clear. Let me say that again. Both of Christ's natures were sired by the Holy Spirit, but only one of ours was. And that was the Spirit. We were sired by our earthly fathers physically. But your second birth comes only through the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, salvation is not inherited, so it's not of blood. It's not of blood. You know, you, because your grandparents were great Christians doesn't mean you're, you're one. I had a, uh, one of our church members in Florida, their next door neighbors, uh, asked them if they could get me to do a funeral in Fort Myers. And the funeral was for a young black man who got killed in a gun battle downtown Fort Myers about between 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. This fellow come up and put a gun in his face and robbed him. And when the guys walked away, this fellow's name was Kareem. He pulled out a pistol and they killed each other. So they called me to do the funeral simply because the aunt lived next door to one of our church members. So when you do the funeral, you better try to figure out some things about, about the person you're having the funeral for. So I get to the, I met with the family at the uh, funeral home. That kid had the most beautiful casket I'd ever seen. Mahogany. Well, anyway, so I'm, I, walk, I saw his mother standing there at the casket. I went up and uh, talked with her. I said, uh, does Kareem have any, does he have any church background? Oh, yes, yes. His grandmother was a faithful Pentecostal. <laughs> well, that make the wheels start turning in your head. That was his experience concerning Christianity, that his grandmother was a Pentecostal. So you see, he couldn't inherit salvation. He couldn't inherit it. So it's not, not a blood or blood relation. Nor can he get it through the will of the flesh. Man cannot save himself. That young man couldn't save himself. Bonnie, I had a couple from our church. Where I the neighbors that uh, I had them sing and Bonnie sing the funeral. The place was packed out. And Kareem had the, the cutest little boy, probably about three years old, that you've ever seen. I mean, and there they were. And I suspect just about every person in that funeral home was lost. They got the gospel. But you can't, you can't.
can inherit salvation. Not of blood, relative blood, not of the will of the flesh. You can't save yourself. Nor the will of man. Man cannot be saved by the will of another person. Salvation is a personal choice. Amen. Not of the will of man. You know, some churches believe that when you die, you go to purgatory. First of all, there's no such place. But secondly, they also believe that by the will of man, you can be prayed out of there and get to heaven. But not by the will of man. You can't be saved by the will of another person. It's a personal choice. But of God, salvation is of God. The Lord Jesus does the saving. <laughs> he does it all. All of it. He does it. How do you know that? I know it because I experienced it. I was there when it happened. Then we find out our Lord, remember we're talking about believe that he is what? Well, the Lord is our righteousness. I like all these words we're talking about this morning. Righteousness. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 16 says, In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jer Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. You know, I, I get overwhelmed sometimes just with that very thought. Jesus is my righteousness. Isn't that something? I'm shouting in my brain right now about that. Jesus is our righteousness. Titus chapter 3, verse 5 states, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, not by works, our works of righteousness, that, that, he have, that, that we have done, but according to his mercy, his mercy, he saved us. Thank God for his mercy. Yeah. Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, and he found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, Paul said, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Righteousness. Are you righteous this morning? Are you, Miss Bond? <laughs> now we need to listen to the words of prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 61 10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. You can stop right there, preach for a long time. She will rejoice in the Lord. He's our salvation. We ought to rejoice in it. We ought to do it every day. Amen. Said, I will rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. That's shouting ground. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bride, bridegroom decketh himself in ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. <laughs> You're adorned with righteousness. Sometimes I wish people get excited about that. There you see it. <laughs> you ever get excited about God? Yeah. You, don't, you don't do it here, amen. Wish you would. You know, I quote a lot of songs. Now you're mad at me now, aren't you? I don't worry about that. You better remind me. <laughs> I quote a lot of songs. Why? But you know, they can make good preaching. Amen. Songs can make good preaching. Edward Moat penned the, 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 the song, in her song book, The Solid Rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ, his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Amen. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come, and he's coming, when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before his throne. You're going to stand before the throne faultless simply because of God's righteousness. 
The only righteousness that will get you to heaven is His, the Lord's righteousness, His alone. Well, we ought to be excited about that. Then we find out, believe that He is what? Well, the Lord is our hiding place. Our hiding place. Psalm 119, 114 says, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Psalm 119, we find King Hezekiah and all Jerusalem under siege and imprisoned by uh, a the king of uh, Assyria, and Rashagin, his spokesman, Rashagin, he, he told Hezekiah that there was no place he could hide. Did you ever play hide and seek? Yeah. When I was a little fellow in eastern Kentucky, I had a lot of cousins. And oftentimes, we'd just go out in the woods and play hide and seek out in the woods. It's a lot easier to hide out there. But we play hide and seek. You don't play hide and seek from God. He's already bound you if you're saved. So we're finding out here that the Lord is our hiding place. When things don't go right in your life and you just want to get away from everything, hide in the Lord. He wants you to. Get behind the Lord. Keep Him in front of you. You can hide from all the problems that may be in your life, or certainly the ones in the world today. If the election, if it goes wrong, I will not, I will not watch news again. Not. But I know what it's going to be. Well, watch something, you know what's going to happen. You mean to get off on that? But I'm going to hide in my study and not watch the news, I guess. But the Lord is our hiding place. Sad part about elections, most of the time God will give us what we deserve as a nation. That's what we got right now as a nation. We're getting what we deserve. I just break that last. I told Miss Bonnie, we're an unusual couple. We spend a lot of time talking to each other. <laughs> we were talking yesterday, and I said, you know, it would not surprise me one bit because of all the wickedness in this country that the election goes in a way that we would not be happy with. It wouldn't surprise me. It happened the last time. There are ways to steal elections. Doesn't have a whole lot to do with my message other than I'm hiding from the news. I'm going to hide behind the Lord. I spend as much more time with him than I do now, and I spend a lot of time with him now. But our country's in a mess. But I love our country. That's yeah. not even the issue. But keep in mind, God will give you what you deserve. Yeah. And as a nation, I saw a post on Facebook. The person said, I'm embarrassed with the fact that people rejoice and rejoice about babies being torn limb from limb in the abortion clinics. People rejoice in that, but yet they get offended when you use the wrong pronoun. How in the world do we ever get to using pronouns the way they're used today? It's absolute. It makes no sense. It makes no sense to anybody that's got any common sense. That's something missing in the world today. Pronoun. Yep. Girls call themselves cats. The uh, governor of Minnesota putting feminine hygiene products in boys' restrooms. Tampon. Why in the world? 
You don't be say it, do you? I said, Bonnie. I probably shouldn't. I said, well, maybe they get a nosebleed. <laughs>
I got so sick of that. Of course, the other party that makes you sick. You know what I did? I saw a minute little conference being held up in the library of uh, Venice, Florida, put on by the Constitution Party. You know, there is a Constitution Party in the United States. They believe strictly adherence to the Constitution of the United States. Now, what's wrong with that? Nothing. So I go to the con, Molly and I go up there, and uh, they had a pres they made a presentation about the Constitution Party. You might get mad at me, but it won't be the first time. I said, I said, that makes a lot of sense. Strict adherence to the Constitution. So we joined the Constitution Party. Now they're not recognized in Ohio, or I would join. And still, they're not, they're not going to be on any ballots. They were in Florida. In other kinds, other states, but they're not recognized here in Ohio. Not that they would win; they're a small minority. And the fellow, was the vice president of the state of Florida party, was a former missionary. <laughs> Same labor as us. So that kind of hit a high point with me. His name was Jack McLean. His wife was Lois. So I started delving into that. And I was getting into it. And we went to a rally. What was that rally, Miss Bonnie? Uh, oh, some sort of constitutional rally right there in Punta Gorda where we live. And there was probably 5,000 people there. Not all of them along the Constitution Park. It's a patriotic rally. Jack McLean called me and tried his best to get me to run for Congress. Can you imagine that? Tried his best. We were, I was preaching at a church in Belglade at a uh, Spanish-speaking church. A friend of ours started a church down there for migrant workers. I preached there for him several times, and they had an interpreter, which I like. Um, you have an interpreter, you can say something, and the interpreter interprets it, and it gives you time to think about the next thing you want to say. And I, did, I just hope the interpreter was interpreting what I was saying. You never know about that either. Anyway, we were we were preaching over, I was over there one, one Sunday evening, and, and after the church, we were out in the car with... Uh, Brother McMillan and uh, his wife. And Jack McLean called me. We were there in the car, Miss Bonnie and I and the other couple. And wanted me to come and speak at a patriotic rally on the steps of the old Capitol building in Florida, State Capitol. Man, I wanted to do that. But at the same time, his body was having cancer surgery. And you know who the other two speakers were? Chuck Baldwin, who was running for president of the United States under the Constitution label. Chuck Baldwin. He's a preacher there in Western Florida. And the other one was Alan Keyes. You ever hear of Alan Keyes? He, was, uh, he ran for president under the... Uh, He, he, he ran for president under the Republican Party name, and he was the other speaker. And there would have been me. <laughs> I really wanted to do that. Couldn't do it. Anyway, the Constitution Party kind of got in my blood because they wanted strict adherence to the Constitution. Oh, I'm not, you can't register with them here in Ohio, but I'm registered to vote the most conservative party I could find. And that's, I'm not ashamed of that, that's for sure. But we got involved because our country's going to hell. And if we don't turn back to God, I, I, the pace is going to get faster and faster. I, 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 see, I get off on that and didn't mean to. I'm talking about believing what? And God is what? What is the Lord? 
He's, he's a lot of things. But lastly, the Lord is our hope. Our hope. Amen. Like that word hope. Jeremiah 17, 17. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Well, there's another song that I like. Only a single little verse, but it's not singing. But Edward Moat wrote, The Solid Rock. The solid rock. The Lord is our solid rock, no doubt about it. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the, the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he is all my hope and stay. He is our hope. Our hope. Our only hope. To turn this country around. God in heaven knows I hope we do. And I'm not a negative person. Not at all. I just don't think it's going to happen. But we're going to reap what we sow. We're going to get what we deserve. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 said, Blessed is the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, he has begotten us again unto what? A lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A hope in the Bible is an earnest expectation guaranteed by God's promise. Then lastly again, the Lord is our strength. Right. Well, we need that. Psalm 18, 2 said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Are you weak this morning? Our country is. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I have a hard time glorying in my infirmities, and God knows I got them. But I need to be better at that. Paul did it. He's a good example. He said, are you weak? Well, if you are, you're a prime candidate for the strength and the power of God. All of us face weakness one time or another. A lot of us in here have experienced it not too long ago, maybe even today. So you're a prime candidate for the strength and the power of God. Is it any wonder why we should have no want? I believe he is what? We don't have any want. We have all we need. The Lord Jesus Christ is perfect. He's perfect. And we're finding out this morning that it's only by faith that we can please the Lord. Faith. Got to have it. Got to have it. You need a lot of it. When we come to God, we must believe that he, is really, that he really is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. That's, that's after you're saved. You should diligently seek Him. Sometimes we forget about Him. But we should, be, we should be seeking Him and His power every day of our life. Why? He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He is a lot of things. We only talked about a few this morning. The question I guess we could ask is, what is he to you? What is the Lord to you? Well, let me ask you just to think about that. Not only today, during the week, just think, what is the Lord to you? I can tell you what he is. He's all sufficient. He's all you need. I trust in him. Have faith. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, we're looking forward to our pastor to come and share with us some very words of God. We pray you fill him with the Spirit. God, fill us to hear from that same Spirit. We ask it in Christ's holy name. Amen.